Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Um, this is the Series 2 engine that I'm going to be upgrading to the 200. Um, and as such I'm going to, I've already taken the top end off. A lot of the stuff was taken off just to make it a little bit more easy to move around. Doesn't weigh so much but um, yeah basically all I need from this is the crankshaft, the, um, the drive bearing, I've already taken off the mag housing, <clears throat> which was a seal one anyway. We're going to be changing this oil seal to a Viton one, as I've already stated. Um, so I want the crankshaft off of it. I don't know yet where I'm going to use the gearbox. I doubt it, but that was a brand new uh, rear hub bearing from MV when I thought I had the clutch issues. In if you look back on previous episodes. Um, I thought I had a clutch issue when I, it was the actual rear bearing had decided to uh, die on me. But uh, these things happen. So I'll put a new MB1 in there. So I'll probably use that one um, on the uh, GP engine that I'll be putting into it. Um, I will show you uh, bits and bobs like the, the top end. Uh, bear in mind it's five years old and I think... Um, scooters india you know pat them on the back they can't you can't fault their cylinders and the pistons they use there's, there's not a mark on it um the only disconcerting part that i sort of um that i encountered with uh, stripping down that side was um i did put a lot of grease on the bearing seals and um this was all still coated like in grease and you would have thought after five years and you know i've used the series two if you look at videos i've used it quite a lot not every day of the week but um i've used it quite a lot and <clears throat> i would have thought the petrol would have cleared the uh the grease off so maybe there's a lesson learned there don't use too much grease um what i'm going to do is take the side of this engine off and i'll cut back in again we've already done this a few times so all of these 10 mil nuts and washers um, we'll put them in a, a little box and um, then I'll cut back in again. Right, so we've got the side of the engine off and I've just removed the gasket and still still leaking oil at the moment, but you, you expect that. The old, the old design of it holds oil in the bottom anyway. I don't know why they didn't put a hole in the bottom there to drain it all there. So you could get all the oil out, you never ever, unless you take the side of the engine off, um, get all the oil out of a Lambretta for some reason. But what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to keep all these um, screws, nuts and bolts safe, without um, killing myself with the heater. Right, so... One here. So all the nuts and bolts, washers from the engine casing can all go in here. I don't know where they are. I'll show you the condition in a minute of the um, crankcase side. I can move over there for a second. I will tidy this all up before I start building the engine properly. We need four leaving out or two no we don't we don't need any i'm using a different um clutch extractor we can put all of them nice and safe this has still got its li thimble on it comes a bit of an airlock in there where it's got the oil around it pushing it back but so they're all M10s. There's a longer one there for the exhaust um, stud, basically where the downpipe comes along. There's a little hook that goes on there. So if you're changing any of these, the long one goes there just before the jack up point on the casing. So right, um, put the exhaust ones in there as well. lose any Put them back 
in there. Remove an hour. I haven't decided yet whether to rebuild this engine with the GP200 crank or not. I may do, just as a spare. Because uh, uh, the piston and barrel were in good nick. So I just need the compressor for the clutch. So I'll find that out and then stick it on and we'll cut back in on that as well. Alright, just take the thimble off. If it will come off. And screw in this. And then we need to take that circlip out. Doesn't need going in miles, just so it clears this. And get a screwdriver in there. Whatever I've done with it. Under there. I'll pull up the Lambretta one. Do that a little bit more than that. Use your fingers as well. But, uh, I'm fighting me. There we go. Roll it around, clear that, and then just undo it. Then what we need to do is use the clutch holding tool to undo the sprocket. We can take the chain off then in a minute. So she's free. And like I always do, this oil, it, although it's dirty, it's still good enough to put your gearbox, all your bits and bobs, anything you can get out of here basically can go in it. Just want to have a look at the plates. I'd say I built this engine probably four or five years ago, five years this year. <clears throat> We've only had it apart once with the rear hub bearing. So we put the clutch all back over there so I can find it again. Yeah, but that clutch is like new still. That's why I always do these. You get people that sort of question the need to do that. I mean, look at all of them. They're in brilliant condition because they get oiled. They don't burn out. Because it's cold they're all stuck together but that can go in that oil along with that circlip we can remove the center part pressure plate and catch our springs and put all our springs in there as well just stops them from getting basically lost and greasy um, I'm gonna no I won't I'll put the thimble back in Then other screws that I'll put in there. In that one. Or I'll never find it again. Screw back. So all we need to do now is knock the tab washer over, um, put this clutch holding tool in place. Another tool I've had for absolutely years and years. That way around actually. So it doesn't go all the way in the clutch. What it basically is doing is locking so that you can get that off and this off. And if I remember rightly, that's a 14mm head. Out. There you go, 14 mil. Right, so I just used the um, electric tool, tool that I've got for that. Come straight out, and I've just bent these two out of the way. Uh, again, we still need this in place. Uh, I've 
bought myself a torque driver. Um, uh, I haven't bought a battery one because I do most of my work here and you're not going to carry it with you while you're uh, out and about. show you it working how it saves saves a lot of grief basically see how easy that is to undo and quick worth its weight in gold but like I say I've only just recently bought that battery ones are the same let's get it back on there time being okay. we've got our tab washer to come off this one's already undone the same tool because you can put weight against it as well um, it's just easier isn't it so that can come out our spring that's an inner chenty one if possible if you've got one with a good thread use that one all the time um, I know uh, MV and places like that have them, but and I've got one on that GP that I built engine, but um, then they're never as good as the original bolt, in my opinion. It's one piece and not two. This just pulls straight out, as you know. Sometimes you have to put a screwdriver under there, depending on how tight it is because everything's freezing cold it's a really cold day today just turn it while you're pulling it off it does it will come off as i say that's that's not ultra tight but yeah probably needs a bit more on the screwdriver there we go look at that spider there's hardly any damage to it as well we'll say if they're lubricated up they do last it's when they run dry or it's really badly um, put in I mean you, you think this is as old as the bike this part here might have to just knock that didn't expect it to ping off like that but there we go I'm just showing you that oh, one bearing two bearings these parts here are not all worn out I mean that's that's as old as the bike which was 1960 um, what's that 52 years old and it's still as good as new um, got the bearing bits and again if you're reusing that make sure you clean them all up at the spring and the cup um, I'll find that in a second. M4 somewhere. Pull off your sprocket. You can knock this as well. There is a tool to take these out. Pair of pliers. Um, when you pull this off, if you can get anything under it, let's get that out of the way. So there's our chain and our sprocket. Look at the condition of the sprocket for, in effect, what is, what, 65 years old, something like that. Excellent. Let's say this part's on the crankshaft. I'm not actually sure how the tool works with because this has got holes in it so whether it pinches it and then pushes against the crank I'm not really that sure but normally a bit of heat on that swell it up a little bit and it, it, they do normally just fall, fall off but this is it is absolutely freezing again today and don't need to take the chain gu guide off into that
won't need a lot. But I'll probably do it if you right. So it looks like this washer here was stopping it coming off. Um, again, a new piece of equipment. So it's basically locked on like that. The drift did move it in the end. Um, and then all I've done is I've knocked the crankshaft through. So that's the crankshaft I'll be using. See where I'm, what I'm saying about the grease? I would have thought that would have washed all that rubbish off over the uh, few years that I've uh, built this engine, but obviously not. And this crank uh, is a Timony. It's not marked up as Timony for some reason, but and it's got the the silver conrod. There's no mark on it whatsoever. Um, and I bought it probably, oh, I'd say probably about three or four months before I. Uh, bought this scooter to do this up anyway so what we need now is we need the uh, bearing out of here because I want to keep the bearings that we've got um, just changing the drive side oil seal and the uh, mag side oil seal oh, I can't remember if I put the screws in there or uh, iron bolts it's too many years ago I'll stick all them bits safe and we'll turn the engine around and have a look oh they are allen bolts you probably can't see can't see them but four Allen screws in there. Um, they also preen the edges. So I'm going to imagine they're going to be quite a pig to get out. Uh, and again, spring side to you. Spring side both sides to you. So I hope you can see that. So we've got to get these four out. And what we're going to do there is we're going to use a uh, impact. Um, screwdriver basically with a bit on the end and an extension and uh, just take our time with them because um, we don't need the oil seal we can put some heat in if needed it I can't remember if I actually uh, put any um, thread lock on them I probably did knowing me so I'm gonna get the bits together and then cut back in again right so I've got an extension piece. I'm going to try these straight out. Brilliant. I say it's one of the best tools. I think I don't know why I never bought one before. Maybe that one. That might be the expect exception to the rule, but. That's three out of four. There's always one in there, so I'm going to mess around with that one now. That is, I've used the Dremel to just cut a slot in the head and then use the flat blade part, and it's, it's now spinning. So, I normally do these laid on its side anyway, it's 99% out now. We've got flat bladed uh, ones to replace this. So there's our drive side oil seal. We need to change that. And that's an inner chenty one. So I'll be reusing that again. A wipe. It's got the halite washer. Still in place in there. What I'm going to do is just warm this casing up and that bearing should fall out then hopefully I don't know if I showed you the one I took out 
there you go so I cut a slot in it and just use the screwdriver attachment which I'll put away in a second like I say there's no real good place to uh, to knock this bearing so um, I mean, two minds whether to order one or not, but I do need the rear hub bearing out anyway, so that was the next job. Oh, um, rear brake cable nearly knocked you over. And I will I will take off that because it's been lazy not to. So again, just get these. I've used the Dremel to just cut a slot in the head and then use the flat blade part and it's it's now spinning so I normally do these laid on its side anyway it's 99% out now we've got flat bladed uh, ones to replace this so there's our drive side oil seal we need to change that and that's an inner chenty one, so I'll be reusing that again. A wipe. And it's got the halite washer. Still in place in there. What I'm going to do is just warm this casing up. And that bearing should fall out then, hopefully. Again, I won't bore you with the details of uh, showing you you know, 10 minutes of uh, a Scootopia oil seal. Wow. I know the bearings were German. Yeah. That's his life, isn't it? This one's not important. I could actually leave that one in. Um, <clears throat> but I do need this plate for the oil seal I'll knock that out I mean that is a good bearing in there a nice bearing unfortunately you're knocking these bearings out there's nowhere if I spin the engine around again if I show you there's nowhere really safe to knock it Because you shouldn't really knock a bearing from the inside, always the outside bearing race. I'm just trying to turn the engine around so you can see. I'll top, have a tidy up again. There. Oh, did I? I don't know if I showed you the one I took out. There you go. So I cut a slot in it and just use the screwdriver attachment which I'll put away in a second. Like I say there's no real good place to uh, to knock this bearing so um, I mean, two minds whether to order one or not, but I do need the rear hub bearing out anyway, so that was the next job. Um, rear brake cable nearly knocked you over, and I will I will take off that because it's been lazy not to. So again, just get a screwdriver um, and just preen that over. Again, camera bang in the way, but
camera for a second. If you are in the way. Take my 10 mil again, which should be on my screwdriver attachment. As you know, in the GP, we're not be using the original chain guide like this. I don't swear by them or anything but I do like them you know again as with anything you know they've spent a lot of money in Shenty um, and so did Piaggio sorting out stuff like this and you know I don't like using no guide at the bottom put them screws back in there They were both new when I rebuilt this engine. A lot of the studs and bearings and what have you, all of it. False economy, really, isn't it? What I was going to show you was the halite washer that goes the opposite side of there. See how it compresses up, seals the oil, the oil gets in this side and sealed the opposite side and the same with the petrol can't get through this way. So we've got a shim again on our Christmas tree, All that's safe there. Now we need 11s which is that one. <laughs> 